When federal investigators raided the $1 million New York apartment of Ilya Lichtenstein and Heather Morgan, they discovered thousands of dollars in getaway cash and a couple frantically trying to destroy all the evidence. At a surface level, the couple had appeared to be a successful, if not quirky, duo of internet entrepreneurs. However, it soon had become clear that they had been leading a double life. During the seizure, investigators say that Morgan asked if she could collect her cat to leave the apartment. However, instead of picking up her cat, she bolted to her phone and repeatedly hit the lock button before being restrained by the investigators. What was on the phone? What had the couple done? This is a story of one of the biggest Bitcoin thefts of all time. New York's most notorious couple and a six year game of cat and mouse with federal investigators. Using information made publicly available by the Justice Department, we have reconstructed for you the Bitfinex story. It is early in the morning of August 2nd, 2016. The presidential campaign is in full swing after the Republican and Democratic conventions. Phil Potter, Bitfinex chief strategy officer, receives a phone call. Hackers have breached Bitfinex security and are draining customer deposits. Potter begins to make multiple frantic phone calls to his team. The team is located in many different time zones. Back office functions are done in Taiwan. Technology support is concentrated in London. Compliance is done in Hong Kong. The first thought we all had was, oh my God, is this another Mt. Gox? Said Harry Yeh, managing partner of Binary Financial. Mt. Gox was a cautionary tale. It too was the biggest Bitcoin exchange. At its peak in 2013, it handled 70% of Bitcoin transactions worldwide. Mt. Gox too had gotten hacked. Mt. Gox did not survive. So devastating was the hack that stole about $460 million worth of Bitcoin, Mt. Gox actually declared bankruptcy and shut down. Strangely enough, Mt. Gox shutting down was actually one of the main reasons why Bitfinex was so successful. After Mt. Gox died, many people went to Bitfinex and Bitfinex became the top crypto exchange of choice. But now Bitfinex was also facing death. Every second that was going by was leaking more and more Bitcoins. This was people's savings. This meant lawsuits. This meant potentially the death of Bitfinex. Eventually, technical teams at Bitfinex block currency transactions. However, not before 57% of all Bitcoin had been stolen. The global price of Bitcoin had decreased by 15%. Phil Potter and the Bitfinex executives assess the damage. 119,754 Bitcoins had been stolen from client accounts. They stay up for four sleepless nights, working around the clock, talking to bankruptcy lawyers, strategizing a plan on what to do next. Eventually, they decided not to shut down the exchange. They would fix the situation and go after the thieves. Now, I'm not really going to describe in this video how they regrew Bitfinex from the brink of death, although that is a great story unto itself. Essentially, what they did was they shaved all the accounts. So everybody took a 30% hit, even people who weren't affected by the theft. Everybody's account got shaved by 36%. Everybody took a hit, but the collective overall survived. In old bank robbery movies, it's often when the robbers leave the bank do they face their toughest challenge. Storming out of the building, they find themselves confronted by SWAT teams, guns drawn. If they're lucky enough to escape, they're wanted for life. They spend their entire lives looking behind their back thinking, am I going to get caught? Are they onto me? According to a statement released by the Justice Department, FBI, IRS and Homeland Security Special Agents were also waiting. They were waiting for the crooks, the thieves, to make a fatal mistake in revealing who they were. So let's show you how exactly it went down. First, following the breach, of the Bitfinex security systems in August 2016, 119,754 Bitcoins are transferred from the victim's wallets to a single wallet called Wallet 1CGA4S. At this time, the Bitcoin was worth $71 million. In January 2017, a portion of the stolen Bitcoin is moved out of the wallet and is sent to seven different accounts created on Alphabay the largest criminal darknet market at the time. You see, since 2016, Alphabay had promised a coin tumbling service. Quote, Alphabay can now be safely used as a coin tumbler. Making a deposit and then withdrawing after is now a way to tumble your coins and break the link to the source of your funds. 
In other words, you transfer your coins in from your normal wallet, they disappear into Alphabay like a black hole and you get back somebody else's Bitcoins. However, just how reliable was Alphabay at covering your tracks? You see, the problem is, is that in July 2017, the FBI, the DEA and the Thai police arrested the administrator of Alphabay and seized its server in a data center in Lithuania. Now, what was in this data center? Well, according to Tom Robinson, a co-founder of the cryptocurrency tracing firm Elliptic, the data that investigators appeared to have got from Alphabay is the key to all this. Potentially, I think that this could have been the transactional data linking the Bitcoin deposits coming into Alphabay with the withdrawals coming out of it. Essentially, you have a full you know, transaction record. Maybe that's what the feds seized at this point, And maybe this was the crucial link because otherwise, how would they have seen the Bitcoin going into Alpha Bay and how would they have been able to link that to you know, the Bitcoin being withdrawn? This seems to be a crucial link. Following this, the Bitcoin is then moved from Alpha Bay to accounts in multiple virtual currency exchanges around the world, labeled VCE1, VCE2, VCE3, and VCE4. Here, special agents actually begin to notice connections between the accounts at these exchanges. Frequently, these accounts use emails hosted by the same India-based email provider. Coincidentally, they were all created around the same time period, around the 2016 hack. Following this, the accounts tend to be accessed by the same group of IP addresses. Next, the thieves begin to do chain hopping. They convert Bitcoin into the privacy coin Dash, and you know, more often than not, they convert it back again. Now, privacy coins promise enhanced anonymity when making virtual transactions. The thieves also begin to move Bitcoin in thousands of small automated transactions across a peel chain. In a peel chain, Bitcoin is sent bit by bit through a massive chain to reach its final destination. Special Agent Christopher Janzuski says, In my training and experience, I know that it is common for money launderers to rely on a peel chain to obstruct the movement of the illicit money. Following the peel chain, investigators find that it reaches a single wallet, VCE5. Here, they make a big discovery. VCE5 was opened on January 13, 2015. It was also verified under a California driver's license belonging to a Russian US citizen named Ilya Lichtenstein. Ilya Lichtenstein had moved to the United States when he was a boy with his parents. He was the son of a mortgage broker and had grown up in a wealthy Chicago suburb. He'd always been an intelligent, high-achieving kid and showed academic prowess expected of a future tech entrepreneur. A former classmate describes Ilya as a nice kid, smart. Would be like if McLovin from Superbad ended up pulling off the heist. Ilya had launched several startups and had moved to San Francisco in 2011 to launch MixRank a sales company that had gotten one and a half million dollars investment from Mark Cuban and other investors. In 2014, he met Heather Morgan, who was also living in San Francisco. Also a young entrepreneur, Morgan is described as a mid-career millennial living the now increasingly common multi-life of an entrepreneur, investor, marketing guru, and self-proclaimed persuasion expert. She was a big time social media user, a bit of a wannabe influencer, and she had launched Sales Folk, a marketing firm specializing in cold email marketing. Later, she will credit sales folk as the source of her self-made wealth. Friends describe the couple as having an on and off relationship, with a big reason being Heather's very public social media lifestyle. Ilya seemed to be quite uncomfortable with being constantly recorded. If you're interested in what I say, record it the first time, okay? Because I'm not a little wind up little dancing monkey that's gonna repeat the exact same thing a second time. I'm only gonna say one thing the first time, Second time you record it, I'm gonna say something completely different. Because that's what I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about that same thing as before. <laughs> <Is it all? laughs> Nonetheless, Ilya proposed to Morgan in 2021 via a weird creative multi-channel marketing campaign that involved putting up posters of Morgan all over Manhattan. In 2016, around the time of the Bitfinex hack, Ilya dropped out of his company MixRank and changed his LinkedIn title to the vague terms of advisor, mentor, and investor. Two years later, Morgan did the same. She quit her job, 
citing burnout, legal threats, and dishonest employees. This is the time investigators say that the couple somehow came into the possession of 95,000 of the 120,000 stolen Bitcoin. Following this massive acquisition of cryptocurrency, in 2018, the couple moved to New York into a $1 million apartment on Wall Street with their Bengal cat. They decorated the apartment with fine carpets, animal pelts, and even a taxidermied alligator head. After all, Morgan would call herself the Crocodile of Wall Street. At this time, Morgan also began to rap under the name Razzle Khan, whom she described as like Genghis Khan, but with more pizzazz. Rapping was Morgan's alter ego, according to Natalia Zamperini, her henna tattooist. In fact, Morgan would often just break out into impromptu raps to anybody who would listen. During a talk in the style of, you know, those TED Talks in the library of the Williamsburg Hotel, she actually began by rapping one of her own songs before she was cut off after about 25 seconds. Morgan also had other aliases. At one time, she went along with Liechtenstein and a friend to a Maori show taping where they all wore blonde wigs. The blonde wig was for her alias Charlene. After moving to New York, Morgan began pumping out more and more social media content, rapping about her self-made wealth, and continued to contribute to Forbes magazine, including writing an article titled, Experts Share Tips to Protect Your Businesses from Cyber Criminals. Morgan never really mentioned any of an interest in cryptocurrencies to her family or friends. As far as they were aware, she made her money from writing articles and her email marketing business. Although appearing to be uninterested in crypto, there are some clues that lead to her double life. If you actually listen closely to one of her songs, she raps the lyrics, spearfish your password, all your funds transferred. Spearfishing is an actual hacking technique and the funds transferred, well, I don't need to explain that. In 2019, federal prosecutors say Liechtenstein and Morgan began to create an escape plan. They traveled to Ukraine to meet money launderers in an effort to cash out more of their Bitcoins into real world money. There are, by the way, plenty of crypto exchanges in Eastern Europe and Russia that won't ask awkward questions as to where your cryptocurrency has come from. Authorities say that the pair successfully laundered about $2.9 million of Bitcoin turning it into gold, NFTs, and things like Walmart gift cards. Maybe the couple were getting close to cashing out more and more of their Bitcoin, but to be honest, it seems like they didn't really know how to do it at scale. Maybe they weren't the really hardened criminals like you know these North Korean Bitcoin gangs that are stealing huge amounts of crypto. In 2021, the couple must have known that federal investigators were really onto them. They received a notice from their internet service provider that records related to them were being sought by a grand jury. And in January 2022, everything came to a head when investigators broke into the couple's apartment, finding getaway preparations including $40,000 in cash and multiple other currencies. Liechtenstein's hard drive is seized and Morgan is unable to destroy critical evidence incriminating them like their phone. After decrypting the hard drive, investigators get access to Liechtenstein's cloud storage accounts and find spreadsheets with login information for the accounts that he'd used at various virtual currency exchanges. Remember all the accounts opened with those India-based email addresses? Well, they were listed too, and even included notations like frozen, in quotes, if they'd already been taken down. In this courtroom sketch, attorney Sam Enza sits between Heather Morgan and her husband Ilya Liechtenstein in federal court. Today's arrests and the department's largest financial seizure ever shows that cryptocurrency is not a safe haven for criminals, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco said in a statement. Liechtenstein and Morgan now face a maximum of 25 years in prison. However, still a mystery remains. Who really perpetrated the hack? The couple has not been charged with actually hacking Bitfinex, but simply laundering the money. We don't necessarily know if they did it or if they hired somebody to do it or if they pawned with somebody. Essentially, we don't know. The public, we don't have the information yet. Maybe the federal investigators do so far, but we don't know. Also, what will happen to the Bitcoin that the government has not yet found? There is apparently still $330 million of Bitcoin still believed to be in wallets controlled by the couple. But then again, how could they possibly get access to it now after all of this?